Hi, hello, and welcome to the OKS Mom podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Miller, who is a comedian who just happens to be the mom of three beautiful kids. I um, have some kind of notification. Okay, there we go. (laughs) This is going to be fun. New setup today. This is a new thing we're doing is the Facebook Live turning it into a podcast. So uh, thanks for coming today. The mom we're going to talk about. Um, I hope this is all like a fake fake news uh, because this mom makes me blush and I think she'll make you blush too. So you'll have to listen to the end to find out about the mom we talk about today. Um, but I won't get um, I won't do much stalling here at the top. You know, when you when you pop in, just comment who where you're from and what you're doing today and um, all the good comments. I'll make sure, hopefully, I can see it on here and find it. And I'll go ahead and um, give you a little shout out during the broadcast. So what's new with you? Because what's new with me is I had an amazing week. Who had an amazing week this week? It can't just be me. I got to be on set all week of Heaven's Date. Heaven's Date is an independent film that I believe they're planning to put on Pure Flix. So if you don't know what Pure Flix is, it's Netflix. It's all like GPG um, rated things. Mostly like religious in nature. So Heaven's Date is about two angels with like a matchmaking service. It's super fun. They're still filming, but um, I'm done with my part. And it was just a blast. So it was a really busy week. So I thought, you know what? Facebook Live will be the podcast t- this week. Um, so that's what's new with me. Oh no. Chris, hi Chris. She's not going to lie on herself. She said she would say she's vacuuming, but mainly she's just watching her Roomba vacuum. Hey, that counts. That counts. Your Roomba's doing the work. That's okay. (laughs) She's in Scranton. Oh my goodness. I love, love, love The Office. So I'm guessing since you're in Scranton, you do too. So thanks for tuning in, Chris. I need a Roomba. I um I think if I had a Roomba my house would definitely be cleaner. Uh, maybe if I had a Roomba and like no children <laughs> and no pets. That'd be great. Uh <laughs> let's see what else is new with me. Um it's my brother's birthday. I know that's not a big like that has nothing to do with me, but happy birthday, Steven. And um I was always excited about Steven's birthday growing up because my birthday is four days after his. <laughs> so I'd get so excited. Yes, it's Steven's birthday. That means mine's next, you know, in the order. So that's fun birthday stuff. Um, are you guys watching anything besides this? I mean, uh, do you guys, are you watching any shows right now? What are you watching? Last week I told you guys about Snowflake Mountain, so I finally finished that and it's worth it. That's on Netflix. It's about some kids who, 20 year olds who just live at home and they they really don't have direction in their life and don't do adult things and then they put them in the wilderness. (laughs) So that's pretty awesome. So this week I was was busy filming all week. So last night I was like, oh no, what am I gonna talk about? And right before bed, I put something on thinking, I'll just watch this for a few minutes and probably fall asleep and hopefully my husband will figure it out and turn this off for me because <laughs> I can't figure out that sleep timer I don't think we have one on the TV and um, so I found because I'm really into true crime a true crime documentary and I found out I can't watch those at bedtime because I will just stay up so I'm almost done with it it's on HBO Max it's called who killed Garrett Phillips and this is a very interesting case. What I like about this case is there's pretty uh, firm timeline 
and that's super important when you have different suspects and stuff if you're into true crime so in this case a neighbor hears something that they're like that doesn't sound right and what they ended up doing was call the cops <laughs> and so there's like recorded time stamped all that so what usually happens is people tell you later like oh I found out something was happening and I had heard something at around this time but I just didn't think it was that big of a deal but this was nice to have like that neighbor you know she's probably a true crime junkie too and she's like yeah I'm going to I'm gonna call the cops and she just straight up tells the cops I don't know if I should call but I'm gonna call and I think that's fine that's perfectly fine as long as you are scared enough Call the cops because what she did was um, she she's helping like solve this case just because of that evidence the timestamp so I'm actually not done so I don't know if they ever find out who killed Garrett Phillips but it's on HBO Max and um, their main suspect is like the mom's ex-boyfriend but another ex is involved and he is a cop so it turns out kind of like it sounds a little bit like making a murderer where maybe the police are just looking to uh, pin it on one person and they're kind of blind to their friend who's a cop so I don't know I don't know what's gonna come of it because I didn't finish it yet <laughs> I was like I gotta go live but maybe I should just sit here and finish it no I won't uh, Chris thank you Chris in Scranton Pennsylvania says she's waiting for the crown and unfortunately I watch tons of shows and movies and too much. I watch too much. I have not seen that one yet. I'll have to check that one out. I've heard so many good things. And and that's the problem is now that we have all these streaming services. There's just so many good shows. And each streaming service has their like top couple of shows and then the other stuff is like, that's oh, okay. So then you have all these streaming services, then there's just too much. There's too much to watch. So that's why I'm telling you, watch who killed Garrett Phillips and then tell me who killed him because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, first up, let's go ahead and get right into it. What's in the news? I've got this um, pulled up on my phone over here. In the news, I say the news, but these are like the stories that Google thinks I want to know. So I don't know if this is news to you guys. Do you guys get these news stories in your news feeds or is it just me? This one, maybe it might it might be a little too controversial, okay? I'm trying to keep things lighthearted. It's Friday, so we just need to go into this weekend strong and and happy. <laughs> okay, you've probably already heard about this. I'm getting this story from it says K I R O 7 I'm not sure where that is out of, but the story is out of Dallas. So I don't know if this is a Dallas news station or someone else talking about this, this story, but in Dallas, a pregnant Texas woman was ticketed for being in the Hove Lane, and that's where you can get on it if as long as you have more than one person in your car. So she was driving in the HOV lane and she got a ticket because it was just her but she says because she's pregnant it doesn't count what do you think <laughs> um, she tried to argue that with the police officer and he was just like here's your ticket lady just go tell the judge they'll probably let you off um, so you know everybody it's probably her the Supreme Court is saying like for the states to figure out what they want to do as far as Roe v. Wade so that's on your state now it's not just the entire nation doing the same thing that's my simple understanding of it so she said well if Roe v. Wade is overturned that means that this child is an actual person in the car with me and I say I say that's really not the spirit of the Hove Lane, right people, right? If you want to get away a with um, being in the Hove Lane with one 
person. You gotta put a convincing mannequin or blow up doll in there, right? At least put like a, a child seat with some, some baby dolls in it. <laughs> no, um, I don't think it counts. I don't think it counts because that baby, she was gonna be in that, um, be in her mommy's tummy anyways, whether she was in the hub lane or whatever lane. So I, I think um, she might dispute this. Well, it sounds like she will. It's all over the news. And I'm curious what the judge is going to say. And uh, apparently this was a little, something's in my mouth. Oh my goodness. Okay. This was the little uh, conversation she said uh, she had with the officer. An officer peeked in and asked, is there anybody else in the car? And I said, well, yes. And he said, where? <laughs> I'm so sorry. This all, like, imagine I'm there with this officer, like, um, thinking, does she need maybe to go to the mental hospital? I don't know. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but. So when he asked where, she pointed to her stomach and said, my baby girl is right here. She is a person. And he's like, uh, you got to have people that aren't, like, inside your body. Which, yes, that makes sense. I, this is what I think happened. I think she was in the hub lane. She was running late. She's entitled. She's a Karen. She's like, I can be in this lane. I don't care. And then whenever the police officer called her out, she's just like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me, <laughs> let me make something up. I hope she does not firmly believe that being pregnant counts as two people. Because honestly, if you are pregnant and you actually do everything for two people, like eat for two and stuff, it doesn't work well in the end. It does not trust me on that. I um, I saw this. Did you guys see this? This is a, a more heartwarming, less controversial story. Um, but Barbie came out with the Jane Goodall Barbie doll. Did you guys see it? I I'm trying to figure this out if I can put things in the um, like the comments like links and stuff so um, let me see if I can find it on my see that's the problem because I'm on my phone but I'm also on the computer anyway I'm gonna figure this out my apologies I know what I'll do um, this is not the um, this is not the link I'm looking at this and I I'm not an affiliate or anything so what I found is um, a link <laughs> to how you actually like buy it so I'm just gonna put that in there if you buy it I don't get any money from it or anything or maybe it won't let me here's the other problem is I recently switched to Mac and I don't understand how to use it uh. How do I just copy something? Um, control V. Nope. You know what? I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, it's command, command V. Okay. So in the show, not the show notes, but in the comments under this video is a huge long link. So you can look at that Barbie doll I'm talking about. Yay. I, I figured something out. Um, so Jane Goodall, Dr. Jane Goodall. Sorry, Jane. She was honored with her own Barbie doll. And if you see it, she's just super fun and has like the khaki shorts and little um, binoculars. Is that a uh, flask? No, <laughs> it's one of those canteen things. Um, and a little, I see a little chimp. Does the Barbie doll come with that? Okay, maybe I, this is what I need to get all my daughters. I know they're too old for Barbie now, but uh, let me see. Um, she's $35 on walmart.com. Like I said, I don't get any money for this, <laughs> but I might buy one. I don't know. I, what do you guys think? Honestly, she doesn't look anything like Jane Goodall, does she? But I'm wondering maybe that's what Jane Goodall looked like when she was 20 years old. Come on, Barbie. Um, and I didn't do any research to just kind of refresh my memory, like how old Jane Goodall was when she really started doing all her work with chimps and stuff. Um, and I guess this chimp is supposed to look like 
David Graybeard. It's the first chimp she studied in her research. How fun is that? I love it. I love that the focus of this doll is on here's here's a female in science. Here's somebody who's devoted her life to um, nature and, and making the world a better place. And we're going to put her in some um, some conservative khaki shorts and a, um, a shirt that's she can work in. That's what I'm trying to say. There was another word for that. Anyway, anyway. Um, and it's not all about, well, we're going to dress up and be beautiful. Because that's not all women are about. That's not all, you know, that's not all what women are about. They are about, you know, making a difference. So I, I, I'm glad that Barbie is shining a light on uh, females like that. And there's nothing wrong with being beautiful, okay? There's nothing wrong with being beautiful. I don't know if you saw this. And once again, this is one of those internet stories that they say is news. <laughs> and I'm just like, is this news? But I read it. And I was like, oh, this might be news. Um, a lady took to TikTok. Uh, she works for Olive Garden. I found this on daily.com. And perhaps, um, perhaps, I, I'm trying to see what her TikTok name is. I can't find it right now, but we'll find, hopefully it, it'll pop up on this story. So here, here's the deal. And I did not know this. But people go out to eat to the Olive Garden. I did not know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I assumed people ate there. I've been there a couple times. But the thing Olive Garden might be known for probably are their breadsticks. But also, they have like a never-ending soup and salad with the breadsticks. And um, here's the deal. It's just one price. And at the end of the meal, you you tip. If you're like me, you, you look and go, okay, well, what's 15, 20%? What is it now? I think it's supposed to be 20% now. Okay, I'm going to add 20%. But what's happening is people are spending, I'm guessing it's $15.99. I didn't look it up. Maybe it's $12.99. Does anyone know how much the never-ending soup and salad is at Olive Garden? I don't know. So it's probably compared to the other meals, not as much. And I think they've got stuff in there that's like $25. So it's been a while since I've been to Olive Garden. but um, So you're not spending a lot on that meal is what I'm saying. So that 15 20% is not a lot. But maybe a patron will sit there apparently and they will order those that never-ending soup and salad like they were promised and they don't think about it that they're sitting there for maybe twice as long as another patron who's spending more money and so at the end of that meal that waitress is just getting a couple of bucks and they're out all that time they can't go back and make up that time to do more um, different tables because you sat there ate so much food which is your right they are offering never ending soup and salad and breadsticks apparently so um, she just wanted as a waitress at Olive Garden she just wanted people to be aware you know you're tipping on the that percentage of the bill but really maybe take into consideration the time because apparently a lot of waitresses like their lunch they don't want to work lunch because they're just not making money so she posted a TikTok about that let me see if I can find her name and this is what I don't get about it is because it went viral people I think probably hadn't even put that together they're not in the service industry they don't understand what it's like to live on tips oh this is her name at Solus dot bodies with the Z at the end but solace is two L's um, so she uh, she's the one who posted it 
and um, she got fired. And they're like, hey, you don't want to work the soup and salad, then I guess you're fired. <sighs> Which I don't, I don't believe she should have been fired because I think what she was doing was kind of a service. A lot of people just don't get it. They don't understand. They do not get it. Um, and yeah, I think um, my only experience is door gnashing because that's it's mostly tips for that too. So if you're not on the other side, you just you just don't understand that you're asking someone to work for like a dollar an hour or something. So a lot of people were really supportive and commented that they don't like sit down for hours and just get tons and tons of um, refills. But I guess if you do that, just keep that in mind. Like how did they do, were they, did they do, um, did they work for you a long time? So like keep that in mind and maybe give them more than you would have for other things. So poor girl, she, she now, she doesn't have to worry about the soup and salad, but I have a feeling she has, you know, she'll find a better job probably. Olive Garden, I love their dressing. I can drink their dressing and their food's just fine. It's, you know, it's a chain restaurant, but I feel like we're really stepping on some toes here where you just can't say anything and then keep your job. Like, where's the line, people? She's, she's speaking a truth and she's helping people. Okay, I'm kind of nervous about today's mom. Each episode, I talk about a mom that makes you feel better about being a, the mom you are. Because you might not be the best mom. You might not be the worst mom. So maybe you're just okay like me. Are you an okay mom? Hey, at least you're not this mom. Hopefully this lady's not listening right now. Uh, this mom, I am hoping... I am hoping this mom is somehow there's like a fake news story here and I'm hoping that it's like a hoax you know that um, all of this is they're trying to pull I'm like trying to get attention and, and the story's not real uh, because this is something on reddit and allforfunlife.com picked it up and they're you know dishing about it and kind of talking about it Hey, JJ, would you let Marie outside, please? My dog's asking to go outside. <laughs> so that's fun. You know, it's a live video. Marie! So that happens. Go outside, Marie. Go outside. Sorry. <laughs> right when we got to the good part. So, like I said, I'm blushing. I hope this is not true. It says... My husband had an affair with my mom while I was on deathbed. And now they're married. I hope this is not true. It says, my husband had an affair with my mom while I was on deathbed. Now they're married. So I think what's happening here is this lady might be from Britain or England or something. And also, I don't think English is our first language because the name is very difficult to pronounce. Camilla DeMello. You know what? It kind of sounds Italian. It's Italian Day, Olive Garden. Um, she says she was in, in hospital. See? Only English people say that, right? In hospital. In hospital, fighting for her life in intensive care when the two people she trusted more than anyone else betrayed her. But don't worry about her, she's now found love again. So a heartbroken woman says she will never forgive her husband or mother after they had an affair when she was on her hospital deathbed. This is one of those clickbait articles too, so don't you just love that? Where they kind of like repeat the same thing 80 times and then there's huge ads. <laughs> Okay, she was in the hospital for 78 days, and I think everyone had just given up on her, which is so sad to think of. I've been in the hospital for 12 days, 
My son was in the NICU for four days and each day you're in the hospital. It's probably like the longest, slowest day of your life. So I understand that. Um, if you're in the hospital 78 days, that's like, let's, um, it's like you're in there for five years or something. That's what it feels like. But still, you're married. So, um, her husband ended up marrying her own mother. She says when she was a teenager, her mother started to compete with her. Gross. So, her mom was a young mom, 20 years older, but still no excuse and um, so when she was 25 that's when she fell in love with her husband and he was actually 10 years older so that means the mom is 10 years older than her husband and she's since she's 10 years younger than her husband so they got married in 2013 and the following year, their now six-year-old son was born with a complicated pregnancy. So that's, that's rough. At the end of 2017, she needed bariatric surgery uh, to take care of, I guess, what had happened with the pregnancy and stuff. So then she had a stroke and needed to be hospitalized again. So during that period, her mother went to her house to help her husband take care of her son. At that time, he was only four years old. So her father stayed at their house, at his own personal house. And I guess they had a younger kid too, <laughs> maybe a teenager. I, this story is kind of crazy. So she's in the hospital for three months and um, that's when her mom fell in love with her husband or who knows maybe there was some kind of attraction or feelings beforehand which is so icky and gross I don't care if you're only 10 years apart it's still gross so after she got okay this is what happened only later did I learn in the four months I spent in the hospital much of the time between life and death my ex had only visited me twice and my mother once they were busy with the kid or whatever, didn't come in. I would have made different choices. If, if grandma's with the kid, I'm going to be with my loved one, right? She added that her father came to get her out of the hospital on March 22nd, 2018 and told her the news. She said, I had the worst pain of my life and it wasn't physical. Without much ado, my father, who had already taken my son, said that his wife and my husband were having an affair. Can you imagine? Your dad comes to get you and says, sorry, but I don't think you're married anymore. Um, obviously, her dad was pretty rock too so what she does is she calls her mom she's so nervous she said um i left the hospital i i'm alive and she said is it true is it true that you and my husband are a thing and the mom was like yes we're together and we're happy i i i can't help but put myself in these shoes and the situation's so different you know, with having a mom that was, uh, you know, 26 or whatever when she gave birth to me, but still, I don't care how old you are. That's your, that's your baby's husband. How can you even think of him any way other than a son? Um, so she goes on to say way more if you want to hear it. All right. Um, she said she found out that her mother still celebrates like the relationship with her ex-husband e even though like it's when they were technically still married so she still celebrates that anniversary and doesn't make it like acts like it's no big deal like he was married to my daughter at the time Whew. 
She says, almost two years after I separated, I found a nice guy and started dating, and we've been together for 10 months in a respectful and ethical relationship. I have a beautiful and close family. My father is loving. My son is perfect. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking she's not too close with her mom anymore. What do you guys think? I still hope that that's some kind of a like a uh, story you know that people just put out there like for attention or maybe they're um, just seeing oh will this get traction and maybe I can just make a lifetime movie out of this or something like that I really hope that this is not real but if it is at least you're not that mom at least you're not in love with your kid's spouse how about that <laughs> Well, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been probably more fun for me than you. Um, hopefully, I'll be back next week with some more mom fails, things that um, make you feel like you're a better mom than you actually are. No, I'm sure you guys are doing great. Uh, you can always email me at OKSMomPodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on all your podcatchers out there or just share this live video on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Nicole Miller. Have a great day.